welcome to Learn to Climb Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here, and my name is Clement. Today, we are talking about turning. The turn that we're going to cover today is called the medium level turn. By saying medium, we're going to bank the aircraft at 30 degrees angle of bank. By saying level, we're not going to climb or descend throughout the whole turn, but instead, we'll be maintaining altitude. In short, will be banking at 30 degrees angle of bank while maintaining height and that is the medium level turn. Before we dive into how to conduct a medium level turn in flight, we will talk about some of the terms that are related to the medium level turn. First and foremost to talk about is the angle of bank. If you have been on an airplane, you would know the aircraft is turning by rolling or banking. But how can we tell the angle of bank when we are flying? If you look at the lateral axis when the aircraft is banking, it is no longer parallel with the ground or the horizon. In fact, there will be an angle formed between them, and that angle is the angle of bank. The next term to define is called the rate of turn. During a turn, the aircraft change in directions, and the rate of turn is to describe the rate of change in directions. The unit for this will normally be in degrees per second or degrees per minute. If the aircraft is in a steeper turn, the change in direction will be faster and the rate of turn will be higher. On the other hand, if the aircraft is in a shallower turn, the change in direction will be slower and the rate of turn will be lower. For example, let's say now we are flying and we are turning. Let's say we completed a full 360 degree in 2 minutes, our rate of turn will be 108 degrees per minute or 3 degrees per second. This rate of turn is also known as the rate 1 turn. The next term to define is the turn radius. When the aircraft is turning, imagine it is drawing a circle in the sky. Turn radius is the described distance between the aircraft and the center of the circle. If the distance between the aircraft and the center increases, the turn radius increases. If the distance between the aircraft and the center decreases, the turn radius decreases. The last term to define is the load factor. Load factor is the ratio between lift over weight. When we're flying straight and level, because lift and weight are equal, our load factor would be 1. However, when we're in a turn, the load factor may vary, and we'll have a look into the next section. In this section, we'll be talking about the forces the plane will be experienced during medium level turn. During straight and level flight, the lift force is pointing vertically up, and the weight force is pointing straight down. They have equal amount of force, but in opposite directions, which they are equalized. However, in a medium level turn, because now we are in a bank, the lift force will be banked as well, to the direction of the turn, and the weight will remain unchanged. Please keep in mind that the amount of lift and weight are still equal at this stage, but there is a problem. If we extract the vertical component from the lift, and we call it the vertical component of lift, you can see it is insufficient to equalize the weight. In this instant, the vertical component of lift is less than weight. As a result, the aircraft would start to lose altitude, which is not what we wanted. Is there anything we can fix the problem? Yes, we just have to apply a bit of back pressure on the control stick to increase the angle of attack on our main wing to increase the production of lift. When our total production of lift is increased, our vertical component of lift will be increased as well. Ideally, we will apply just enough back pressure on the control, so the vertical lift will equal the weight, and we will be maintaining a level turn. We have been talking about splitting the lift force into the vertical component. If we split it into the horizontal component, it is actually called a centripetal force, which is actually the force that pulls the aircraft into the direction of the turn. 
This is the main force that enables the aircraft to turn. Earlier we have talked about the load factor, which is the ratio of lift over weight. When we are doing a medium level turn, more lift will be needed to increase the vertical component of lift to overcome the weight. Because of that, lift will be more than weight. So when we are doing a medium level turn, the load factor will be more than 1. To assess how well the aircraft is turning, we will judge the turning performance by the rate of turn and the radius of turn. Now, let's imagine we are all flying a plane and we will be turning at different angle of banks while maintaining the constant speed. And how would it affect our turning performance? This is actually quite similar to us when we are driving a car when we are turning at different steering angles. When we are turning just a little bit on the steering wheel, we will be turning at a slower rate and it will be a bigger turn. On the other hand, if we are turning a lot more on the steering wheel, we will be turning much faster, much tighter and the turn will be smaller. The same logic can apply to the aircraft. When we are flying at the same speed while banking at 10 degrees, our rate of turn will be lower and the radius of turn will be higher. When we are banking at 30 degrees, our rate of turn will be higher and our radius of turn will be lower. Now, let's have a look at another scenario. Instead of constant speed, different angle of bank, we'll have a look at constant angle of bank at different speed. I want you guys to imagine every one of us is captaining a boat and we are all turning in the middle of the ocean. The important part is we are all maintaining a constant steering angle with the boat. When we are having a lower power setting while maintaining a constant steering angle, the boat will be drawing a smaller circle in the middle of the ocean. Because of the smaller circle, the turn should be quite fast, so we can say the rate of turn is high and the radius of turn is low. However, if we start to increase the power setting of the boat while maintaining the constant steering angle, the boat would start to skid and draw a bigger circle because now we have more power. Because of the bigger circle, the turn will appear to be slower and the radius will be higher. The same concept can be again applied to airplanes. If we maintain the same angle of bank but at different speed, the same result will apply. When we are trying to conduct a turn in an aircraft, we have to move the control to the side to control the ailerons so we can roll the aircraft side to side. If you guys remember from the effects of control lesson, the secondary effect of roll is yaw. And today, I have a new kind of yaw to talk about that brought by the roll. It is called the adverse aileron yaw. Let's say now we want to roll to the left. We have to move the control to the left. The left aileron goes up and the right one comes down. Because the left aileron is coming up, that's why the angle of attack is lowered, so as the lift. On the other wing, the right aileron is coming down. Angle of attack is increased, so lift production is increased as well. When there is less lift being produced on the left wing, the drag that comes along will be less as well. Same happens on the right wing. When the lift reduction is high on the right hand side, so as the drag. When the right wing has more lift than the left, naturally the aircraft will roll to the left, which is what we wanted. At the same time, the right wing is creating more drag than the left. As a result, the aircraft will yaw to the right, which is not what we wanted and this is the adverse aileron yaw. So how do we stop adverse aileron yaw? The key is the rudder. If we are banking to the right, we'll apply a bit of right rudder. If we are banking to the left, we shall apply a bit of left rudder. If the amount of rudder is correct, adverse aileron yaw will be completely eliminated. For medium level turn, we have a couple of different work cycles to help us fly accurately and correctly. The first one to go through is the pre-entry work cycle. H-A-L 
H heading. We'll be setting a heading that we want to turn to on the heading bug. Let's say we want to turn to the north. We'll be setting 360 degree on our heading bug. A altitude. We want to do a level turn. So on our altitude bug, we'll be setting our current altitude. For example, let's say we have been flying at 3,500 feet, we'll set 3,005 and throughout the medium level turn, we aim to maintain 3,500 feet. L. Lookout. Before we turn, we'll first look out. If we're turning to the right, we'll first look out to the left, then center, center, right. If we're turning to the left, we'll first look to the right, center, center, left. So we'll be looking to the direction of our turn last. The work cycle for entry is BPV. Bank, balance, back pressure. B, bank. We'll be using the aileron to initiate the bank and we'll be banking until we hit 30 degrees angle of bank. B, balance. We'll be using a touch of rudder to eliminate at first aileron yaw. If you guys remember earlier from the video, when we initiate a bank, we may get some at first aileron yaw. So, if we're banking to the right, apply a bit of right rudder. When we're banking to the left, apply a bit of left rudder. B, back pressure. During our medium level turn, due to the fact that our vertical lift is insufficient to overcome our weight, we have to increase our lift production. What we have to do is to apply a bit more back pressure on the control stick to increase the angle of attack to increase the lift generation. We have to increase until the vertical component of lift is equal to the weight. In that way, we are now able to carry out a good medium level turn. During the turn, we'll be using the work cycle ALAP to maintain the turn. Attitude, lookout, attitude, performance. A. Attitude. When we are turning to the right, the horizon will be on top of the left top corner of the dash by two fingers. When we are turning to the left, the horizon will cut through the middle of the standby instruments. L. Lookout. We'll be looking into the direction of the turn to make sure there is no traffic in the area that we are turning to. A. Attitude. Back to the same attitude, we just want to maintain the same attitude that we maintained initially. P. Performance. We are doing a medium level turn. So obviously, we want to try to maintain level flight. How do we do that? By looking at our altimeter to make sure we're maintaining the same number, same height throughout the turn. Another key important indication to look at is our angle of bank. Just like our level, we're trying to do a medium turn. Medium means 30 degree angle of bank. So throughout the turn, we will try to aim for that. Last but not least is our heading. Remember in our pre-entry cycle, we set a heading bug. We want to turn to a specific heading for our exit cycle. And when do we start to initiate the exit cycle? It's about 20 degrees before our desired heading. For our exit cycle, it is B, B, B again. Bank, balance, back pressure. However, the difference with the entry is they are completely opposite. So let's start with the first one. B, bank. Let's say we have been banking to the left. To exit from this bank, to resume straight level, we have to apply the opposite aileron, which is, in this case, the right aileron. B, balance. Same as bank, we have to apply the opposite balance. We'll apply a bit of right aileron to help with the roll out. B. Back pressure. During the exit, because we have been applying more back pressure throughout the turn, we have to release a bit of back pressure, otherwise the aircraft will start to climb. 
After this work cycle, we'll be resuming flying straight and level again. And that's how you do a medium level turn from start to finish. Let's say now we have to conduct a medium level turn to the left, to the northly direction. First, we'll be using the pre-entry work cycle, which is HAL, H heading, I've set north, altitude at 5000 L lookout, we're turning left, so right, center, center, left. Entry cycle, BBB, so bank, we'll move the control laterally to the left, balance, a bit of left rudder, back pressure, we'll be applying a bit of pulling force on the control. Next up, we have the maintenance cycle, A left. We want to fly by the attitude. If we're turning left, the horizon should be around here. We'll be still looking out into the turn. Our heading is getting closer north, so we'll start our exit cycle, which is the opposite BBB. Bank to the other side, balance to the right rudder, and let go of a bit of back pressure. Now we're flying straight and level, so we'll do our A-left cycle. Four fingers attitude, locate out, four fingers attitude, perform, and that's your turning. This is the time during our medium level turn that we consider our threat and error management. So what are some of the threats and errors that we should be aware of for this lesson? During this lesson, we'll be changing in directions a lot of time. Because of that, we have to conduct a detailed lookout before and during the turn to make sure the direction that we're turning to is clear of traffic. So we'll be safe throughout the whole turning exercise. Secondly, is the back pressure application. A common mistake is we're not applying enough back pressure during the medium level turn. As a result, the aircraft will not generate enough lift and start to lose altitude. And if we're not careful enough and we let that happen, it will exaggerate and will descend at a faster rate, potentially lead to overspeeding and overstressing the aircraft. That's why it's incredibly important to make sure we're applying enough back pressure and we're turning by following the correct attitude. And that's it for today's lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe to our Learn to Fly YouTube channel for more great content. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.